Hey folks, I'm Chris and I'm your Commander Mechanic, here to take a look at the brand new Kamigawa Neon Dynasty Commander Precons. We'll take a look at the commanders, the new cards, and the decks straight out of the box and then put together a little upgrade so you can get it humming ASAP. The first precon we're looking at is the blue and white vehicle themed precon, Buckle Up. I mentioned this in my Kamigawa Top 5 Commander Cards video, linked up top, but this set is exactly what we've wanted for a Commander vehicle-oriented theme for a long time. And now we have a real Commander to head up this deck. Let's take a look at Katori, Pilot Prodigy. For 3 mana, this blue and white Moonfolk Pilot drops the crew cost on all your vehicles to just 2. At the beginning of combat on your turn, an artifact creature you control, not just a piloted vehicle, gains lifelink and vigilance until end of turn. Basically, Kotori is such a good pilot that they can crew anything all on their own. Everything from a smuggler's copter to Parhelion 2. If there's a better hotshot ace pilot out there, I've never met them. And our new multicolored legend in the box, whom I'm a much bigger fan of, is Shorakai, Genesis Engine. This 4 mana blue and white vehicle is, so far, the only vehicle that can be your commander. That alone is so unique I'd immediately pivot the deck to be all about it. An 8-8 vehicle with crew 8, it's a lot easier than it looks as Shorakai has an activated ability for just 1 mana to draw 2 cards, discarding 1 and making a 1-1 pilot token that crews for 2. A draw engine and a token generator in the command zone? Trust me folks, this is exactly what you want from the most reliable card in your deck. There are 20 brand new cards in this deck as well, but let's cover what I feel are the best. The first is Drum Bellower, a 2-1 flying spirit for 3 mana. This is a mini Seaborn Muse, untapping all creatures you control on each player's untap step. If you've ever played with a Seaborn Muse, you know this is a very strong effect, and what is going to be a staple in white moving forward. If you've got any kind of tapping synergy or just want your creatures to have pseudo vigilance, Drum Bellower is a must have. Next up is Imposter Mech. This is a 2 mana clone for your opponent's creatures only. But, being a vehicle, you get a non creature copy of it until you crew it for 3. Paying 2 mana to get the best static or triggered ability your opponents control? That is amazing. I just mentioned Seedborn Muse. Imagine getting your own copy for 2 mana that doesn't die to wrath effects. Or how about your opponent's commander? Imagine getting their copy of a Rionia for just 2 mana. Or their Muldrotha for just 2 mana. There are so many strong static or triggered abilities on creatures that you can copy with this and create a more resilient version for just 2 mana. I love clones, so it's no surprise that I'm recommending this one highly. Lastly, we have Swift Reconfiguration. At first this looks like a flash pacifism, but it is so much more. Not only is this another great 1 mana removal spell in white, but the fact that, like Imposter Mech, it makes the enchanted creature not a creature is the most important part. It's already been broken by creating a 2 card infinite mana combo with Devoted Druid. Since a druid enchanted with it isn't a creature, you can put as many minus 1 minus 1 counters on it that you want, creating infinite green mana. But it can do more than just shut off your opponent's creatures. It could save your creatures in response to wrath or targeted removal effects. Imagine your Elish Norn being non-creature artifacts instead of a creature. Much easier to protect. Now let's take a look at the deck straight out of the box. And there's a lot to say here. Of the 20 artifacts in the deck, 15 of them are vehicles. That's amazing and really makes the core theme of the deck shine. Having a sub-theme of artifact creatures in general is crucial as Katori can give any artifact creature lifelink and vigilance, so turning this deck from a vehicle deck into an artifact creature focused deck is possible very quickly. In general, the curve is reasonable, coming in at a little over 3 mana on average, with a heavier concentration on 4 mana spells than I would prefer. However, the mana base and rocks support this curve well. 37 lands is on the high end, but we're seeing a massive improvement to the quality of lands included. No more Temple of the False God or Reliquary Tower. In fact, there's only one land that enters the battlefield tapped in Temple of Enlightenment. It's like my criticisms of past precons have been heard. The nuts and bolts included in the deck are amazing too. 
Format staple removal like Swords to Plowshares, Reality Shift, and Generous Gift being included just goes to show that real attention is being paid to what can be included to give players a starting point for the format. Overall, from a deck cohesion standpoint, this is phenomenal out of the box. I wish we saw a little bit more value from the deck. Currently, it's worth about 75 USD in terms of equity, and no individual reprinted card is enough to say wow, but I do feel the new, unique cards make up for that significantly. With that being said, if we wanted to pump up this precon, there's a lot we can do that departs from vehicles. Being able to lean into tapping shenanigans with Shorakai at the helm is where I want to take this list. Let's first look at a few combos that we can incorporate here. These are infinite combos, so do beware about including them. With our commander not a creature, but making creatures, we can do quite a bit. That one mana cost to activate is a mistake, allowing us to draw two cards and make a body. It's very cheap. We could easily go infinite with this a few ways. First is with Intruder Alarm. As you make a creature on activation, it then untaps all creatures you control. As long as Shorakai is crude, we get to essentially go infinite. We need a single mana dork, a palladium mirror or a gold mirror for instance, and you can draw your entire library. The palladium mirror would also result in infinite colorless mana too. From there, you can cast whatever you've drawn, or with an Emery Lurker of the Lockout, you can cast artifacts from your graveyard as well. Handy when you're discarding as many cards as you're drawn. We could also include the Dramatic Scepter combo, Isochron Scepter with a Dramatic Reversal on it. This untaps all permanents we control, and in this method, Shorakai doesn't need to be a creature for us to really pop off. And the mana source we need doesn't need to be a creature either. We just need at least 3 mana and we draw our libraries and make a small army. We activate Shorakai, draw 2 cards and make a pilot, then activate the scepter and untap it all, allowing us to loop until we have exactly the hand we want, cards we want, and potentially all of the mana we want too. Including Unwinding Clock is a great way for us to do this at least on each opponent's turn. Sleek and efficient if we had at least one artifact that generates mana and our commander. Leaning into creature activations and tapping synergies, thanks to Drum Bellower and the previous inclusions, we can start cutting cards that don't lean in that direction. We can keep the deck artifact creature focused, but we may lose some of the vehicles themselves. Finding room for Alloy Mirror and Palladium Mirror are crucial since they help enable some of our combo, along with Plague Mirror. Mana Dorks are rare in blue and white, but these colorless options are necessary along with the inclusions of Gold Mirror and Silver Mirror in the deck themselves. We can find room for Merchant's Dock Hand too. That 4 mana activated cost is hefty, but we can do it repeatedly. It's a great way to dig for combo pieces. Voltaic Servant makes a fine include too, at least getting us one additional activation out of our commander at a baseline and potentially untapping another creature or mana rock to get us the ability to cast other spells on opponent's turns. Now being that we have the potential to draw our whole libraries, we could include win cons that let us do that as a path to victory. Laboratory Maniac, Jace Wielder of Mysteries, or Thassa's Oracle. But that's a path that some players and some playgroups don't appreciate. Use that at your own discretion. Otherwise, we could use that mana we generated and our card advantage to pump into an X spell to take out the table. A Blue Sun Zenith works well here, even if single target, since we can continue to redraw it with our commander to take everyone out. You can find my upgraded list in the description below, pivoted to take advantage of tapping and untapping creatures and having a non-creature artifact as your commander. Who knows, you may even get to swing with a big 8-8 mech titan as a backup plan. Let me know what you think of this buckle up precon in the comments below, both out of the box and as an upgrade. As always folks, good luck and have fun.